I've got a lot of questions. You've got for questions. You. Oh, boobs. This is Kate on Hi. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a very exciting video because I am joined by Kate. Hooray! This channel you probably know. <laughs> Kate talks about everything zero waste um, from food to travel, fashion, fashion, and what now <laughs> pregnancy Yay. and impending motherhood because she's pregnant. And um, today we're going to talk about that basically. Over on Kate's channel, we've done a video all about zero waste pregnancy, touching on lots of things, including our boobs, boobs, <laughs> zero waste pregnancy tests, lots of fun things. So um, I'll put the link to that below. So definitely take a look at that. Let's talk about zero waste parenting, um, especially in the early days. I've got a lot of questions You've got for questions, you, oh gosh, okay. <laughs> Fire it saves away. me having to do a whole bunch of research, I could just ask you the oracle. <laughs> um, because you've done this, you've done it, you've got two children. Yep. And did you pretty much from the get-go decide that you wanted to take a low-waste approach? For me, it was when I learned about cloth nappies at NCT. Are you oh, doing yeah. NCT classes? It's on my to-do list of something to sign up to. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so, so NCT, behind. they kind of taught you through lots about parenting and that involves like nappy changing. And the whole thing is done very much with disposables. Then the end, she shoehorned in something about reusables and terries and I was like, whoa. That, that, I want, that, that sounds interesting. So um, as soon as I heard about that, I realized that there was a different low waste way to parent. Yeah, so it got you questioning mm. pretty much everything else. That they yeah, like, yeah. Automatically comes with being a new parent. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's cool. And so did you feel overwhelmed at the idea of using reusable nappies? Because, you know, 30 years ago roughly, I was raised in reusable nappies. I think we're just so used to convenience now. Mm -hmm. But actually, most of us were probably raised in reusables at some point. Yeah, I think my mum just switched to disposables when she had me, but certainly with my two older brothers, she used cloth. And I was chatting to my grandma the other day all about her cloth nappy experience with my mum, and that's just fascinating. Did like, she have any tips or tricks? Well, she used a nappy laundry. So, because um, when it comes to washing, that's one of the main objections that there's so much more washing to do. And there is more washing to do. Um, but my kind of response to that is, well, we're washing a lot anyway as new yeah. mums, whether it's baby grows or clothes or nappies. So it's just part and parcel of being a mum. But back in the day, they had nappy laundries and they do still exist nowadays uh, in certain parts of the country. Yeah. That's not mainstream. Whereas back then, I think it was just kind of like so part of it. A specific laundrette. Yeah, so for you nappies. leave out your nappies and they'll come take them away and return them all clean. Ah, oh, that's yeah. amazing. I've heard of a it service. It does exist these days. Is it a service in rare. North London, I think, that yeah. does a similar bit to yeah. your door? Yeah, that's what this was, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there is definitely some services that still do it. It's just not really the done thing. And also, because there aren't many of these services that exist, mm -hmm. the price goes up and it. I think it's just a cost most people, uh, certainly I didn't want to expend. Did you know or research much about baby wearing and slings and mm. things before giving birth? Mm. Or was that something you learned as you went along? So I think with the baby wearing, I would definitely say it needs to be done in person and it probably needs to be done with your baby. Okay, so don't buy anything just yet. I think personally, wait. Okay. I think um, wait till you have a little baby that you can go. Actually the best place is what's known as like a sling consultancy or a sling library where you go and they have loads of different slings and they have sling experts oh. and you get to borrow slings so you can maybe try something out for a day or two and bring it back. You have this most amazing selection and then once you've found one that works for you and for your baby because yeah. there may be a sling that you love but you put your baby in it, they hate it. Yes, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought about that at all. Yeah. Well, what we did is went to John Lewis, um, tried on all the different types, and then sourced it elsewhere. I personally think, wait, unless someone can give you something that they are no longer using yeah. or something, then you've got that from the get-go, yeah. How was it with your husband? Did he take on the whole reusables? pretty naturally or was he it's, like do I really need to be doing this it's been, a, <laughs> it's been a journey it's been a journey it started off me doing all of it and he would use disposables okay and then well I basically stopped buying disposables so he had no choice and now he doesn't really know any different so but it was never something I forced on him I think he just realized you know I presented him with some of the stats yeah, very um, much. Eight million nappies go to landfill every day in the UK. It just became the norm for us. Mm. But it was it was kind of, you know, it took a bit of time. Yeah, I'm sort of hoping if we just 
start out with reusables and you'll know no different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and just accept that it might be a little bit more of a challenge, but hey, you know, we've man it, most our grandparents and, and older generations have managed Absolutely. for long enough and they probably didn't even have you don't need a tumble dryer. In fact, I don't tumble dry any of my nappies. Oh, really? Okay. No, because they don't advise you to because it can damage them. Ah, so if you want to keep them lasting longer... Behind me is That's the rack with all like of our nappies. Ah, um, okay, yeah. So we don't tumble dry any of the nappies. Like, it does take up a little bit more space in your home. We have like a wooden rack over there. It's just part of the furniture. It's it looks not the beautiful most, well, I don't know about that. No, I think um, it's wooden, it looks handcrafted. Obviously in the summer, they go outside and that's perfect. Yeah. But no, you don't need a tumble dryer. I've got no excuses basically. And actually something I'm really passionate to try and I have been geeking out on things like reusable nappies. There are so many different kinds out there. Yes. How did you this go about problem. choosing which sort? Or did you get a variety? This is the problem that kind of is my bugbear with cloth nappies because the the language around them is so confusing and the types that there are, there's just so many different types that it becomes overwhelming. So yeah. a lot of people just say, okay, too much effort, I'm just gonna go down the disposable route. If it was more simplified, I think many more people would opt for it. I use G nappies. I met somebody at an event and they started talking to me and I just thought, yeah, I'm gonna go with them. Nice. And I hadn't read up too much. And now, like over the years, I've been reading up more and if I were to do it again, I would use something different. I would just use a plain square, like a flat, that you then fold and uh, use a waterproof pant over, so it's a two-part system. My advice for cloth nappies, again, is to go and speak to an expert in person, if possible. So there are nappy libraries up and down the country, which is basically like nappy mega geeks and mega experts, where you go and it's like an evening and you get to see loads of different nappies, you get to ask a million questions, you get to try, they also will sell some. Um, I still like to go to these evenings, like, yeah. <laughs> just for a just night out. For, literally, like, my <laughs> husband and I went to one a couple of months ago just to, like, check that we were still doing everything right, had it down, and just like, yep, yep. Would um, you say it's the secret to a nappy marriage? <laughs> it was like our date night out, it was a bit of a joke. I was like, I really want to go to this thing. I was like, okay. <laughs> Um, so definitely try and find a local nappy library. The other must is your nappy voucher. Oh, I have a nappy voucher? So, I don't know exactly if your council does it. Basically, various councils, and there are quite a few of them now up and down the country, give us, give us money to spend on reusable nappies. Oh, hooray! It's like what we pay our taxes for, but no one really knows about it. You get, you get money. So we got 53 pounds. That's good. To spend on nappies and wipes. It's amazing, like that is gonna give you like a decent start to get a good yeah. nappy stash going. That's very cool. And how do you go about, you just apply to a council? So you need to go on a website called Real Nappies for London, check your borough, and then all you do is you just apply. So yeah. I think what you need to do is maybe scan a copy of your um, pregnancy documents just to prove you're pregnant, yeah. and then you receive it in the post. Amazing. Yeah. I didn't know that, so that's a really yeah. useful tip. It, unfortunately, it's still a little bit of a postcode lottery okay. when it comes to who's eligible for the voucher, depending on where you live, so... Can't hurt to apply, though. Definitely check if your council offers it, and yeah, we're, I'm, I'm working with some people to try and make it more mainstream. That's so, yeah. very cool. What are your recommendations for a reusable alternative for baby wipes? Because I had a friend of mine who's already got a child, but they've got their second one on the way, mm. um, ask me this. And I was like, I need to geek out on that as well, but I haven't yet. So there's a brand called Cheeky Wipes, yeah. who um, basically it's like a big stack of wipes, and then they give them to you in like a tub. Cloth wipes, are they? Or They're cloth wipes, okay. yeah. They're basically flannels. Flannels, okay. They're flannels, guys. <laughs> they are flannels. And then they give you this tub with the clean ones and then a tub for the dirty ones. Yeah. And then a couple of essential oils that you pour into the dirty tub. And then a couple of wet bags that you need for when you go out and about yeah. to take the clean wipes and the dirty wipes. That's it. That's it. You can also make your own from an old towel that you no longer use. Like one towel will make a lot of wipes. Yeah. Old tea towels, old clothes. Pretty much any piece of material go. Do you soak them in water? And add yeah. Potential water? Home, for example, if you had like a changing station, you'd have a little pot with your wipes in a solution of water and essential oil, say, a couple of dashes of maybe tea tree. You change the water maybe every two days or something. Okay. And then you'd have another pot for the dirty ones. For cheeky wipes, there's like a tub, so there's a lid, but there's no reason why you couldn't just use a jar or anything. And then you take the dirty ones, pop them in with your nappies, or not with your nappies if you're not doing that, and wash them. What would you say are the sort of essential 
I know you talk a lot about this, but for somebody who is completely new to this, the bare essential things to get during pregnancy to sort of prep you for early motherhood, because I've, I've done a lot of reading, and there's lists upon yeah. lists upon lists of be prepared, have this, have that, get that just in case, you might not need this, but... Yeah, I think anyway. you literally, you need some nappies. Nappies, okay. You need some clothes, so a couple of onesies, get them second hand, or you know, yeah. you might want to get some things new, but also bear in mind, people will probably give you gifts. Yes, I've already had offers from a sister-in-law and several friends who know that they aren't going to have any more children. And yeah. they're like, here you go, please take our things. Yeah, people will give you, <laughs> yeah. but also new clothes yeah. that they want to bring, and also second-hand stuff, hand-me-downs, exactly. So take it all, okay. I mean, you know. You need some wipes, you need probably some breast pads to stop leaking, because you will leak if you're breastfeeding. Um, if you don't know if you're breastfeeding or not, I would also say hold off from the breast pump okay. and all that stuff because you've got time to get those things. Um, or if you're planning on breastfeeding later. Muslins, I read a Muslins lot. Muslins are things. just great to have as like a all-in-one thing, whether it's to cover you up whilst breastfeeding or to wipe up sick or to cover the pram if your baby wants to have a sleep, even as a nappy. Um, Muslins are useful, definitely. Yeah, they sound beyond multi-purpose. They are useful. <laughs> and then, you know, you'll want some sort of transport system, so like a sling or a yeah. buggy, um, and then some sort of sleeping device. I was going to ask you about sleeping devices, because, it's, again, it seems like there's so much out there. Mm. What do you think is the sort of easiest, simplest thing to start with? Well, the easiest, simplest thing, and I'm not like a healthcare professional or anything, is co-sleeping. Ah, which means they are in the bed with they're you? In the bed with they're in the bed So there's a variety, so they, so with Sunny he was just next to me, so nothing else. Oh. Some people like to put them in kind of their own little cocoon, so they're separate from you. Okay. So personal, some people don't yeah. feel comfortable co-sleeping, in which case there's, you know, every kind of sleeping thing under the sun, yeah. some of them literally attached to the bed, like a oh, co-sleeper. I've seen a picture of one of those, yeah. You might want a separate cot. We actually, for Jack, used the cot that my dad slept in oh. when he was a baby. It's beautiful, <laughs> like white wicker. It's difficult with the sleeping thing because you will need that yeah. from day one. Okay, and so you that's don't know bad. your baby what they want. Yeah. So have something as a sort of setup, but it can change. And yeah, can and then you know you'll need a mattress, and they do advise to buy a new mattress. Yeah, I've which heard that. I've always found really weird because when you go to a hotel and your baby sleeps in the mattress, like they're not going to be buying a new mattress. Yeah. I've heard a few things from friends of like, oh, you shouldn't get this second hand, or you shouldn't get that second yeah. hand. Yeah. Um, and it sort of got me questioning a few things, but I think ultimately, if you know where it's come from, who's had it beforehand, and, and it's been cleaned properly, etc., then the risks are probably a heck of a lot lower. But it's, you know, it's up to you yeah. on, the, on how risky you want to yeah. be, I guess. It's a very, very personal decision. Yeah. Um, we didn't even plan to co-sleep, we just fell into it. Yeah. I absolutely freaking loved it because it meant that I got sleep. Yeah. Okay. And therefore I felt really good. Was there any worry that you might roll onto them in the night? Honestly, no worry. Okay. That would but, be the one thing of like, oh whoa, I didn't see you there. That's the fear and it's a legitimate fear, but I didn't I didn't have that. Okay. I have to say that when Sunny got older, Sam moved out of the bed. He slept somewhere else. And what's tricky is getting them out of the bed. That's, yeah, okay. So when we were like, hey, maybe he's old enough now, maybe to, to move into his own space, it was tricky, but I'd still never take back those earlier co-sleeping days. I think you just have to know there's a short window of mm. it being a transition and potentially a bit awkward. I've seen whole episodes of Super Nanny, <laughs> <laughs> which is dealing with just that one thing of getting them to move from the, the parents' bed to their own yeah. breastfeeding. Mm. Did that, come quite naturally to you or did, did it take a lot of practice? Any tips there? I was quite lucky. I did find it quite easy. Hospital, if you do give birth in hospital, are amazing because they don't let you leave without seeing oh, your baby latch on. That's cool. So they know. really want to see you doing proper breastfeeding. Yeah. There's also like a multitude of help out there. Yeah. NCT, they talk about breastfeeding as okay. well. And I think the hospital where we gave birth did a bit of a course. But I think with many things with parenting, like try not to get to... Yeah, just kind of go with the flow. Yeah, yeah. So I just think being relaxed is so key. I know it's easy to say. Any tips for partners and their role in sort of early parenting? Mm. Like, I think, I keep saying to my husband, you're gonna have to cook for me, you're gonna have to do this for me, because yeah. I'll be busy. <laughs> Actually, I think a really good one for the husbands 
and he's not gonna like me for saying this, is the laundry. Oh, yeah. The nappies. <laughs> Honestly, if your partner can take care of that, I think that's such a such a help. I've just started reading another book. If you watch the video over on my channel, I was like, I've read so many books. <laughs> it's really nice. Um, I like that, doing that sort of thing. One of them is called Postnatal Depletion. Mm. And interestingly, in that, he talks about how um, the culture around new mothers in mm. various cultures throughout the world is very much like a community of people or a couple of people will come in and look after the mother and she'll be sort of fed, bathed, yeah. watered, all of that jazz. She sits by a fire most or yeah. like warm, nourishing foods. So there's an amazing yeah. book that I think you'll like called The First 40 Days. Ah. And it's just about that. It's basically just about like bedding down, yeah. nourishing the mum, looking after her and just, and just resting, eating good food, yeah. not rushing out to see everyone, yeah. not having loads of visitors. I think right now as well, there's a lot of noise around exactly that, like the fourth trimester, yeah. they call it. I think I've heard of that mm. and I probably do need to read up on it a bit more, more reading. When it came to things like toys, did you uh, wait a bit on that? Um, and do you really need them in the first No, I think... Year, nine months? I mean, I'm guessing, I still don't know. I actually think babies are very minimalist creatures. Yeah. They will spend half their time looking at you. Yeah. Everything they need is you. <laughs> you had a few things, but I was very, very keen on not overstimulating my babies like there's just something about when you walk past prams yeah. with babies in and they have a million toys jangling off them I just think oh my gosh the baby's just like gonna be like they come from a dark <laughs> womb Hello. I just don't think they need much as they get older yes they might need some things but when they're younger like yeah. The simplest things are so stimulating for them. Yeah. You know, they, they see in black and white first, and Do then they? yeah, and then they don't see far ahead, and then they're, they're gradually their eyesight widens. Oh. Less is more, definitely, when it comes to toys. I'm I'm convinced of that. Yeah. And secondhand, oh my gosh, you can find the most beautiful toys secondhand. Half of our, more than half of our toys are secondhand. You get the best wooden toys secondhand. I swear. Do you have a favourite? Favourite toy. Wooden toy, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, we got an abacus for like three quid from the kids. They just used it so much. Just now, uh, Jack got this like wooden clock. Um, so many beautiful things you can get that are pre-loved, yeah. Do you have a sort of one in, one out? Yeah, so rotation. we do like a toy rotation. So I take a big bunch of their toys, put them away for like three months to create space and also just to not again overwhelm them with all the yeah. toys and then I'll bring them back in three months to take another lot away. I've kind of forgotten them and we've got more space and yeah, so definitely recommend uh, kind of, yeah, rotating toys. There's also a toy library that we go to sometimes where you can borrow toys. Any more questions? I'm trying to think if there's another question. It's gonna to come to me in the middle of the night. You're gonna text me in the middle of the night like, oh yeah, <laughs> what do you do about this? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out the video over on Kate's channel. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.